I went down the rabbit hole on Google and I found that there are actually cookbooks to cook iguana. Alex, would you be up for trying what? iguana? Yes. Yes, they have that. I, I, well, because it's an invasive species, so you're kind of doing Mother Nature a favor since it's not native to Florida. But I kind of posted it on Twitter, and I was like, hey, does everyone, has anyone tried iguana? And there are actually people who have. Wow. And it's a delicacy, like in Central and South America. I mean, I'd imagine, like everything, right, tastes like chicken, though, I'm imagining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did say it was like a crabby chicken. I don't know there about iguanas, but I, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, they're so big and they're scaly and it's, I don't know. I mean, especially when you're thinking of them dropping out of trees because of these nuts. You definitely need some rain across Texas. I'll cover the drought in just a minute, but uh, let's go ahead and show you where all that rain has really been focused, pretty much east of Texas. I mean, everywhere in the red, orange, we're seeing a number of uh, locations seeing almost a foot to possibly even a foot and a half of rain right near the Mississippi River. Unfortunately, rivers are running high across the area. In fact, across the southeast, these upward arrows means that we have been running above average for this time of the year across a good chunk of the southeast. Let's take uh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, Tennessee, for example, rainfall so far since December 1st, 9.81 inches. That's an inch and almost three quarters of an inch uh, above average for this time of the year. I mentioned the drought, though. We do not have hardly any drought anyway, anymore across the deep south. Uh, Florida, part of the Florida panhandle holding on tight. But then we still have extreme drought conditions across parts of in central Texas, even severe clipping parts of Louisiana. So we desperately need the rain here, just not so much over in the rest of the southeast. Uh, soil is already very wet. So it's not going to take that much rain to really uh, see any kind of flash flooding, in fact. And it's still very, very dry, at least as far as the soil moisture goes across Texas. So it's not going to be that much rain to see some flooding in some locations across the southeast, like over here in the orange and the yellow colors. You know, it only needs about, what, half an inch to maybe an inch of rain to see any kind of flooding. However, in Texas, it's a good ending to that story, but a lot of times thin ice never ends well, especially when that danger is going to be sticking around as we push into the heart of winter. And it's because temperatures across the northern tier will be 10, even 20 degrees above average by late this week. Now, I mean, you do have to kind of walk like a penguin. I know that that's, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm pretty positive that's what you do. Uh, when you try to get on ice, you, it's always safer to make sure you have to kind of drill a hole, you know, it, it, uh, overall, it's just so dangerous. But either way, you need more than two inches of ice to get on it safely for the average size person. When we're talking about driving on ice, uh, you need a lot more than that, uh, eight inches. And this is for a car or a sedan. When we're talking about trucks, you need a way thicker set of ice as well. But I mean, Alex, it's because of these temperatures are kind of flip-flopping that uh, the ice danger is definitely up there. Yeah, absolutely. Got to watch for that.